in the camera for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, that movie, it mentioned briefly nuclear power, and it painted a rosy picture. Now, uh, we, we could debate you know, the technical features of it and you know, whether it really doesn't use resources or not. Actually, it uses a lot of water, but let's not get into that. I will want to bring up in my talk that one thing it does is it creates a lot of debt that goes to people on Wall Street. Um, uh, this is, uh, uh, there are handouts on this out there, and it's actually something I've submitted to the newspaper as a letter to the editor. So, the, if you've been reading the news about solar power, you may have heard that this spring, the University of Buffalo turned on 750 kilowatts of solar panels on their front approach, which serves several purposes for them. They get power from it, which means a more electric bill. It's shade. It's a place where they can show that, look, we can do this right here in Buffalo, which is a thousand miles north of here. They can do this. I mean, their panels are at 40 degrees because they're that much farther north of our 30 degrees. And uh, Rutgers University in, in New Jersey has already installed 1.4 megawatts. And this summer, they've started working on 8 megawatts. Again, way far north of us. So, why don't we have things like that, for example, on the BSU parking lots? Well, partly because BSU hasn't shown much interest, but even if they did, it would be difficult because there's a legal barrier. Um, but let me continue about New Jersey for a moment. In New Jersey, there's a school, Lawrenceville School, that's installed six megawatts of solar on high school land, owned by the high school. A private company installed it and leases back the power to the school which is a win-win. I get most of their power that they need for the school, almost all of it. The private company makes a profit, and uh, everybody's happy. It, well, possibly not whoever their power company was, but that's <laughs> an issue. Right here in Valdosta, if you want to see solar power working, go down to the Mud Creek wastewater plant, 200 kilowatts. It's been in, installed for uh, close to a year now, I think. Works fine. So uh, one thing you hear around here is people say, well, does that solar power stuff actually work? Yes, yes it does. You can go see it for yourself. And on my roof, we have uh, 15 kilowatts that works just fine. Okay, now, why can't we do something like what that Lawrenceville school did in New Jersey here in Georgia? Why can't we have you know, solar parking lots here at Valdosta High School. Why can't we have solar parking lots at Miles High, right on 75, where the whole world will see and discover this is a place that does solar, reduces its you know, electricity bills, looks like a place we'd like to locate a business. Because it's illegal in Georgia to do that. It's illegal. You can only sell your power in Georgia to your one and only utility, which has been predetermined for you by the 1973 Territorial Electric Act, and you can look it up if you, um, it, it, the legislature has the bill there online, or look on Miles Area Knowledge Exchange, you'll find a lot of stuff about this, look under solar or nuclear, you'll see the connection in a moment. So, you can't do what that school did, not here in Georgia. Uh, an attempt to change that in February went to the legislature, it went through two different committees, it was pushed by a number of people. The Georgia Solar Energy Association who obviously want to sell more solar. There's a doctor in Savannah, Dr. Sidney Smith, who's basically been challenging the, uh, that territorial law by building solar panels in parking lots and selling the power to businesses that own the parking lots, which is opposed to the letter of the law. And he's been daring them. I have him on video, daring Georgia Power to sue him. Georgia Power won't do it. And I think it's because they think they'll lose. Okay. Um, so, nonetheless, Georgia Power lobbied against that, and it failed in committee. The change to the Territorial Act to make legal what, for example, Sidney Smith is doing or what the Lawrenceville School is doing in New Jersey so it could be done here. And, okay, so what is it that Georgia Power is doing that they like so much better than solar power? You may have heard that they're building two new nuclear reactors on the Savannah River. Okay, um, how, how many of you have Georgia Power as your utility? Okay, look on your electric bill. You'll find something called the Nuclear Construction Cost Recovery Rider, commonly known as Construction Work in Progress. 
That amounts to about 5% on top of your base electric rate. This is being charged to you because the legislature approved it in 2009. In most states, that's illegal, but not in Georgia and a handful of other states. And it's not just that. It's not just that Georgia Power is charging you a spell tax on your electric bill. It's also that they got the Public Service Commission to agree that cost overruns on those new mutes on the Savannah River can be passed through to Georgia Power customers. Isn't that a sweet deal? Cost overruns, which are already almost a billion dollars, and when David Staples was here, and he's running for Public Service Commissioner, he stood up at the forum over at the Rainwater Center and said he had been informed that it looks like there's another 3.5 billion in cost overruns coming. Which would be, add all that up, that's like 30% of the original projected cost. Now this is not surprising because those, those uh, nuclear reactors that are currently on the Savannah River, when they were originally being built, they were supposed to cost 600 million and there were supposed to be four of them. There are actually only two of them, and they cost nine billion. Mm. And it's still not, that's still not all, and that's only two legs of the three-legged stool of um, finance that Georgia Power and Southern Company have in place for those two new reactors. The third stool is they have an $8.3 billion federal loan guarantee. So they charge you for power you're not even getting, they can charge you for cost overruns, and they have a federal loan to guarantee for $8.3 billion. Uh, if you run the numbers on how much solar you could deploy for that, for that amount of money, it's, it's enough that it would be well more than those nuclear reactors are ever supposed to deliver. They would already be, the solar power would already be online, online, on time and on budget. Anyway, this, uh, so what's that got to do specifically with people around here? Uh, I've been stomping around a lot of streets lately for reasons many of you know. And uh, people tell me about their power bills. They tell me about $200 a month, $300 a month, even $600 a month for single dwellings. This is ridiculous. Okay, you know, what if instead of all that boondoggle money going to build those reactors on the Savannah River, which may never even be built, what if instead we spent that money on retrofitting houses and on solar panels to put on top of the houses, then people wouldn't be paying those rates, okay? Now, maybe you, you might call that a subsidy, maybe you don't want that. What if we just got the, the 1973 Territorial Electric Act out of the way so that people could get financing to put panels on their houses? My brother, who lives in Tennessee, some of you may know him, he went to school here at Miles High, he is uh, currently looking at getting panels put on top of his house in Nashville. He's got two solar installers giving him quotes, and they've already put him in touch with several banks who are happy to make him a loan for basically no money down. Almost all the payments will come from what he'll get from the excess power he's selling to Tennessee Valley Authority. And after about 10 years, it'll be paid off, pure profit. Try getting that kind of deal here. You won't be able to. The banks won't give you that deal because they know you can only sell to your one and only electric utility. I have 15 kilowatts of, on my farm workshop roof, and you know, it's good. I, I like it. The highest power bill I've ever had, let me see here, $44.49 per month. <laughs> Some months they owe me. And that's even though when I pay them for the power I pay them, I pay them 10 cents, they only pay me four and a half cents. Even at that peculiar rate, I, I, you know, I still don't pay anything. Now, I lucked out because I got some, it's a long story, I'll tell you, I got some financing for most of it, and the rest I could pay out of pocket. It was like a small car, which, okay, that's substantial. And most people can't afford out of pocket to pay as much as a small car when they're already paying on a car. But in many states, you can get the financing, but not in Georgia. Okay. If you could, then not only would a lot of people be able to put panels on their roofs, but that would be jobs right here. It would be jobs for the installation, people who do air conditioning or electrical work can easily be retrained to do this. In addition to what they're already doing, there would be jobs for people delivering the stuff. There would be jobs for architects designing how to best do it. It would be jobs for professors to, to study how well it works. There would be lots of jobs right here where we need them. Okay. 
but if you can't do that because of that 1973 <coughs> act, um, right, if you did not have that barrier, then I could, for example, sell my power to somebody in Atlanta or somebody in you know, New York or New Jersey, and I would be happy, I'd get a lot more free power. The people in Atlanta or New York and New Jersey would be happy because they'd get power for cheaper. And even the utility could be happy because they could take a percentage just for carrying electricity they did not pay one cent to put in in the first place. And they wouldn't have to install new lines. They're using the same lines that are already there. So it'd be win, win, win. Okay, why don't they want to do that? Because they're making a lot of profit the way they are. Did I mention that three-legged stool of nuclear boondoggle on the Savannah River? If you had a cushy deal like that, would you want to switch to solar? And no, the Seven Company does not. I went to their shareholders meeting in May, and I addressed them with Tom Fanning, their CEO, standing there on the stage, and I brought up some of these issues, and he made it very clear, as he has in a number of policy statements and other places he's spoken, that he just loves renewable energy, solar, and wind, and sometime in the next decade or later, they'll get around to it. Okay, so what could we do? How can this change? There are two people running for public service commissioner for two out of the five slots, David Staples and Steve Oppenheimer. And they are, uh, unlike the incumbent commissioners, they are not beholden to the electric utility. The incumbent commissioners, four of them take 90% plus of their campaign finances, this is documented, you can look it up, from people who work for the, electric, for the utilities they regulate or their lawyers. The other guy takes about 20%. The two people who are running against them, not them. Okay, so that's, that's one place to start. Another place is people running for the legislature, like J.C., who was just here. He's aware of this issue, and if we get enough new people in the legislature, people who did not vote for that 2009 law that let that extra stuff surtax charge get on your Georgia Power Bill, maybe they could revoke that extra stealth search at and tax charge. That would be the end of the new boondoggle, and it would be a wedge to do something about the legislature could also just simply change the 1973 Act. So, that's what I wanted to talk about. Most people don't hear about this, so now you have. 